hello guys and welcome back to the channel uh, it has been a long time since i posted my last video here on youtube and that's because i was very busy working on other projects and to be honest i've lost a bit of my passion regarding creating user videos but uh, i'm coming back and today's video is going to be a 3ds max tutorial where i am going to show you how you can model this amazing project in a very easy steps so if you are interested in this type of content make sure to subscribe to the channel Turn on notification bells and let's head over to my computer screen and I'll show you how to do it. First, start by creating a plan and adjust the number of segments to 5 and 1. Go to the modifiers list and add an edit poly modifier. Oops, before that, we must adjust the dimensions of the plan to 100 by 17 and a half. I like to keep the objects in the center. Then go to the edit poly, select these points and rotate them with 90 degrees. Then move them to the side. And while moving, click S to enable snapping and also move them on the Z axis. Select the lower vertices and bring them down a bit. Now mirror the shape on the X axis and create a copy of it and move it to the right side. Make sure that the distance between both shapes is 7 meters, then go back to the first shape, right click, choose attach, and click on the new shape to attach them. From the edit poly, select this segment and drag it to the right side while holding the shift key. Then select these vertices, right click and choose weld. Go to the modifiers list and add the turbo smooth modifier, and increase the iterations to 4. The shape already started to look good, but we need to do one more thing. Go back to the edit poly, select these segments and connect them. Then select this one, turn on the toggle to see the end result and increase the crease value to one. From the modifiers list, add shell modifier and make the inner amount 0.6. Select the turbo smooth modifier and add an edit poly. Then select these segments and the click bridge. Press Ctrl V to create a copy of the shape. Go to Edit Poly, select one of these segments and press Alt L to loop and Alt R to ring. Loop again, then right click and hit chamfer, enter a value of 0.1 and make sure to check this small box and hit OK. Go back to the shell modifier, make the inner amount 0 and the outer 0.2. Now let's model the glass part. Select the first shape and from the here key list, adjust the pivot position by clicking on Effect Pivot and Center to Object Bars. Then click Mirror and create copy on the YZ axis. Now remove the Edit Poly modifier. In the first one, select these two segments and increase the crease to one for sharper edges. Delete the Shell modifier. Add an Edit Poly modifier, then from the front view, select this segment and hit Alt L to loop. Right click and create a new shape. Then select it and add an extrude modifier with 0.6 value, then add a shell modifier. Make the inner amount 0.6 and adjust the outer one until it looks good. Go back to the Edit Table spline and remove the unnecessary segments and move back these vertices to be behind the shape. can always turn on the toggle to check the end result. And if you face this problem, just select these supplies and right click and invert them. This is another easy problem to fix. You just need to select these vertices and remove them. To fix this shape, click on it, right click on the edit poly and delete it. Then we need to select this point from the initial edit poly and chamfer it. And because we made these changes, now we need to select these segments again and increase the crease. Now let's create the floors. From the top view, create a rectangle. Then create a circle starting from this angle of the rectangle to keep them on the same level. Adjust the radius to 10 and move it to the center. Convert it to the table spline. Increase the interpolation for a smoother look. Then attach it to the rectangle. Turn on the snapping and move it down to the same level of the floor. 
Before we move to the next step, let's just outline this spline a bit. Then add a shell of 0.6 value. Drag four copies for all the floors. Select one of them, convert it to the table poly, and attach the other copies. Now we need to subtract these external shapes from the floors. I'm isolating both shapes so you can see the process. Go to the modifiers list and add the boolean modifier. Click on the subtract icon and pick the shape from the scene. Do the same thing with the second shape. Make sure you always make a copy of the subtracted shape. Now you add an edit poly modifier and remove the unnecessary elements. You might also find some additional surfaces that you just select and delete. And you can also delete the shell modifier here because we don't need it anymore. To add the columns, click S for snapping and create cylinder starting from the bottom to the top of the shape. Make the radius 0.4 and the height segment 1. Move it to this position, then drag for instances. Click on E to rotate, hold on the Shift key and rotate it at 135 degrees to create a copy of it. Move it up and reduce its height to be just under the floor. Now add the this Poly modifier to the first cylinder and attach the new one and the rest will follow. To add the rest of columns, you just need to copy the cylinder again. And for the other side, just select all the columns and mirror them on the x-axis. Now let's continue modeling the shapes at the bottom. Select this shape, go to Edit Poly and the bridge between these segments. In the top of the Turbo Smooth, add an Edit Poly, then go to Edges and create a shape from this edge. Select the new shape and extrude it with 8 meters. Create a copy of it, outline the spline with 0.6 and remove the older one. And adjust the extrude value to be exactly the same as the rest of the floors. For the other side, just mirror a copy and remove the unnecessary vertices. Outline the spline to be inside the building, delete this one, select these vertices and move them to the right this way. Then select this point right here and fillet it so it follows the same round shape. Now we need to unit both of these two floors, attach both splines, select these vertices and delete them. We remove the segments also. And then right click, hit create line and connect them this way. Make sure to weld between the vertices, otherwise, the shell modifier won't work with you later. Let's make this connection curved. Select these four vertices, right click and hit Bezier corner. Then move the green dots up and down to have a curved shape. And we need also to do the same thing for the lower part. So just create a copy of the shape we just finished, isolate both shapes, attach them, go to the top of view and remove these segments edges. Now we need to move these points in top of the other ones and we need to weld them. And as a final step, we add an edit poly in top of the extrude modifier and remove these surfaces. Now we are coming to the final part, which is the base of the building. Go to the top view, press S for snapping and create a rectangle with the same size of the building. Move it down and increase its dimensions a bit to be bigger. Shell it 12 meters down and convert it into a table poly and remove the upper and lower surfaces. Here we need to make some adjustment to the shape by just connecting and moving the segments before we can apply it to Boosmo's modifier.
Select these edges in the corner, right click and chamfer them to have a sharper corner. To make this part exactly like the image, just move this point like this and chamfer these two segments. You just need to know that in Turbo Smooth Modifier, the closer the distance between the segments, the sharper the shape will be. Now we can shade it to give it a thickness. To create the curtain wall, we need to add an edit poly. Select one of these segments and press Alt L to loop. Right click and create a new shape. Let's move it down to where the curtain wall starts and extrude it. And of course, we need to remove these surfaces by adding it is poly modifier. Finally, let's drag a copy to the top for the ceiling. We just need to delete the it is poly and adjust the extrude value to 0.5, for example. Let's work a bit on the details. Let's add the frames of this curtain wall. Just create a copy of it, remove the it is poly modifier, reduce the turbo smooth iteration to 3, so you can have a longer distance between the frames, add an edit poly again, select one vertical segment and press Alt-R and Alt-L to loop and ring. From the top view, deselect this and ultimately create a new shape. Select the new shape and enable rendering to give it a thickness. Now we can delete the other shape because we don't need it. And oops, it seems like we need to rotate some of these frames. Just add an edit poly modifier and then select them as elements and rotate them with 90 degrees. Okay, guys, thank you so much for reaching this point of the video. I hope it will help you improve your 3ds Max skills. If you don't understand any point in the video, just make sure to drop a comment and I will be happy to answer you. And of course, if you have any suggestions or recommendations about projects that you want me to model in 3ds Max, you can also uh, drop a comment and I will take it or at least try to take it into consideration. Thank you so much, guys, and see you in the next one soon.